Dumb Husky and His White Cat Shi Zun. Chapter 305. Shi Shang Peak. Sacrifice of the Body of God. At the same time, at Shi Shang Peak, battles had already begun on all four sides. The Allied army who had charged up the mountain, the vanguard who had fought against the Zhenlong chess pieces, the guards that was responsible for opening the barrier, the medical cultivators who were in the midst of a chaotic battle. Thousands of magic spells interweaved, lighting up this mountain range that resembled a gigantic black beast. But even so, Xuemeng's attack still triggered a strong flood of energy. That flame was like a hot knife through butter, piercing through the heavens. Chu Wanning turned around to look at the wind, his heart was filled with grief. He knew that Xuemeng had already started to burn his spiritual core. Xuemeng would most likely follow in the footsteps of Nangongsi. Rising Dragon His two fingers were holding the Rising Dragon talisman and blood was dripping from it. But when he heard the dragon's cry, the paper dragon's roar pierced through the rain and soared into the sky, its voice as loud as a bell. Chu Wanning, what do you want this venerable one to do? Chu Wanning lowered his sharp eyebrows and said sharply, go to the end of the path of martyrdom. You have to be fast. The paper dragon swept its eyes over the chaos all over the war-ravaged place. It didn't ask any further questions and only said, come up. A man and a dragon pierced through the wind and rain in an instant. It was as if they were riding the wind and breaking the waves. They flew straight toward the path of martyrdom laid out with countless dead. Chu Wanning looked down from the nine heavens above. The road that connected the two worlds was flowing with a scarlet radiance, like blood gushing out of arteries, rushing towards an unknown domain. Because the back of the mountain was extremely close to the barrier to the demon realm and under the influence of the leaking demonic aura, the sky was covered with scarlet and pale purple flaming clouds, which were not affected by the torrential rain. The paper dragon swooped down, instantly transforming into a golden light as it returned to the incantation. Chu Wanning stood firmly on the path of martyrdom, he heaved a sigh of relief and raised his eyes. You're here. An empty voice came from behind him. Shi Mei was standing at the end of the road and behind him was the demon sex raging flames. Since Xue Meng and the Mei brothers had temporarily taken control of Taxian Jun, the protective barrier around him had already disappeared. Upon hearing the commotion, Shi Mei turned his head to the side, looking at Chu Wanning with his beautiful eyes. You sure are capable. The wind blew his hair and Shi Mei's gaze once again fell upon the distorted shadows of the Devil Realm's gate. The gate of time and space, life and death is wide open. Why don't you resolve that instead of stopping my clan from returning? Chu Wanning did not fall for the trap, the three forbidden techniques were created by Gushin Shang Gong and the demonic Qi will expand its mana by a hundred percent. It's not that I don't want the butterfly boned beauty feast clan to return to its homeland, but once the door to the demon realm is opened and the demonic Qi leaked, the gate of time and space, life and death would open much more wider. Shi Mei was silent for a moment and then sneered, I can't fool you after all. Chu Wanning didn't want to waste any more time with him. A golden light appeared in his palm. Just as Tianwen was about to hit Shi Mei, a shadow flashed past. It was actually Mu Yanli, who was holding a sword, blocking the attack. I won't let you touch him. Mu Yanli raised her sword to illuminate her eyes and growled, he has suffered enough. Shi Mei. Yanli Ji. He didn't know how Mu Yanli had managed to do it but behind her was actually an expanse of Zhenlong chess pieces used to pave the path of martyrdom. Chu Wanning saw the danger and wanted to stop the army of Zhenlong chess pieces. However, Mu Yanli was fast and quickly blocked his path. Get out of the way. Mu Yanli sneered and said, why should I get out of the way? The cultivation world has never cared about the butterfly boned beauty feast clan so why should the clan care about their lives? As she spoke, she raised the tip of her sword and slashed forward. At the same time, a terrifyingly bright golden sun burst out from her surroundings it was a desperate gamble. Mu Yanli, in order to obtain the strongest power, 
had also started to burn her own spiritual core. She had the divine blood flowing in her body no matter how thin the bloodline was. After burning her spiritual core, she would still be able to move mountains and fill the seas. What grand master, what illustrious righteous path! For the past thousand years, you people have been drinking living people's blood and eating living people's flesh. You people would do anything to advance your cultivation. Her sword's spiritual power was so sharp that Chu Wanning had no choice but to fight with everything he had. Although the woman in front of him didn't have a single drop of blood of a butterfly-boned beauty feast clan and could even be considered a distant heir of a god, she was willing to risk her life to help the demons return to their homeland. For a moment, Chu Wanning's white robe fluttered in the wind and Mu Yanli's golden sleeves fluttered in the air. The two of them were as light as kites in the air, yet their killing intent was so strong that it split the air. Clang! Their weapons clashed and they looked at each other in the midst of the sparks. Stop getting in our way. Chu Wanning gritted his teeth and said, In this world. Not everyone will follow as you say. Even though he was covered in frost after walking through the long night, he could still remember Madame Rong's kindness, sharing a meal with him. He could also remember that before Lu Xiangxian's ghost had gone berserk, she had never thought of harming anyone. He could also remember that the disciples of Shi Sheng Peak do not ask for money to help people or that Chu Sun sacrifice his heart to save a handful of his people. He could still remember the bright smiles of the villagers in Yuliang village. He remembered the righteousness of Sun Sunyang of Flying Flower Island, remembered the sacrifice of Nangong Si at Mount Chiao and remembered how Li Wuxin wielded his sword to carry some survivors. He could still remember Nangong Zhengying smiling as he faded into specks of golden light. With a gentle expression, he said, it depends on whether there are still people in this world who remember that greed, resentment, deceit, murder, rape, and plunder are the things that a cultivator of Rufeng sect cannot do. Almost all of these figures were either sick or dead, displaced or in the midst of this calamity. There was even Ye Wangzi. That year in Xianyuan Pavilion, it was she who had spared no expense to save a lone butterfly-boned beauty feast, giving her freedom for the rest of her life and a future. So what? Do I have to forgive this mortal sin because of a handful of people? The more she recounted her grievances, the more her sword attacks became fiercer. My mama was so kind but just because she was a butterfly-boned beauty feast, she was actually eaten alive by my beast of a father. Is her life not hers? Ever since I was young, she was the only one who doted on me and treated me like her own daughter. Other than her, neither my father nor the elders of the sect, nor any of you cultivators, would treat me like a living person. I have the blood of the god in me, so everyone treated me as a scale of fairness, allowing me to extinguish the desires of others, letting me cultivate my ultimate mental cultivation method. On what basis? The power of her spiritual core had been expanded to the extreme and Mu Yanli's entire body was covered in the godlike platinum brilliance. The burning of her spiritual core was different from an ordinary cultivator's, her pupils and hair had even started to turn a pale gold color. As long as you are a descendant of demons, you deserve to be eaten. It has been like this for thousands of years. As the sword's body passed by, the sharp humming sound produced by the clash of godly weapons could almost tore one's eardrums. However, there is nothing more sharp than Mu Yanli's gaze. Mu Yanli enunciated each word slowly, Grand Master Chu, you have read the history of the butterfly-boned beauty feast clan, have you? It's a man-eating book. In the past, cultivators used to fly up using butterfly-boned beauty feast who had been refined into cultivation medicine but today, the butterfly-boned beauty feast clan is using all of you to pave the way for us to return home. With a loud bang, Mu Yanli used up all of her life's energy and swung her sword towards Chu Wanning. Suddenly, Chu Wanning shouted, Juga. The sound of the gookin clanged and a blinding golden light pierced through the heavens, illuminating the entire Shi Sheng Peak. In front of Chu Wanning was a large dome that was filled with Haitang petals. He was floating in the air, his wide sleeves fluttering around. In front of him was Mu Yanli's face, full of hatred. 
She didn't hate him. She hated the injustice of the world. She hated her stepmother's miserable death. She hated that she couldn't live her life freely although she was never imprisoned. Let them go back. Even though her attack was unbreakable, her spiritual power had been pushed to its limits, yet she still could not destroy the barrier. Instead, blood dripped from the corner of her mouth. Her voice was hoarse, and the hand holding the sword was trembling. Her spiritual core was about to shatter. Suddenly, Mu Yanli looked up at Chu Wanning and said softly, Please. Chu Wanning saw his reflection in her golden pupils. Whose shadow was that? The face was confused, hollow, twisted and lost. Was it cruelty? Benevolence. Let them go home Grand Master Chu. She said. The reflection in the golden light suddenly disappeared. Because her mind was in such a mess, it took her a while to realize that her spiritual core had been shattered and she was back to her normal appearance, with only a pair of black eyes looking at her. The armor had been removed, leaving no path for her ahead. She could no longer be the descendant of that cold and arrogant deity, and her eyes were like those of an ordinary woman. She begged on behalf of her younger brother and of the descendants of the demon race that were incompatible with her own race. Let them go. As she spoke, the sword glare in her hand suddenly disappeared. Because it could not withstand the intense battle from before, it shattered into dust the moment the spiritual energy was extinguished. Please. Smoke fell from the sky and the golden white robe fluttered like a lotus behind her. Her waist was still embroidered with the magic scale emblem of the Tianyin Pavilion, the emblem of justice and light shining in the dark night. The Tianyin is vast and mighty, none can hide from it. The children of the Tianyin sect must not be sentimental. Though the heavenly music is faint, it could not be blasphemed. Tianyin is compassionate and respects all living beings. She had been reciting this chant ever since she was young. Even when she closed her eyes and when she opened them, they were still imprisoning her like shackles. Ever since she was born, the first sentence she had learned was neither from her father nor from her mother. It was the recitation for a thousand times a day, kneeling in front of the icons of the gods repeatedly praying. No privacy. Don't be sentimental. Do not disrespect the gods. To the people. On her first memorable birthday, her unfeeling father had given her a box of delicate clay figures, painted and covered with gold sand and when the box was opened, he smiled at her. Wow what a sight. Do you like it? I like it. Mu Yanli raised her head in joy. It was as if tens of thousands of fireworks were blossoming in her heart. Thank you, Baba. The man she called Baba simply raised his hand and caressed her head before taking the embroidered box from her. Then, he smashed into the ground right in front of her. Clang. The sound of clay falling to the ground. The clay figurine could not speak but its eyebrows were curved as it looked at her with a smile. However, its smile was cracked and its face was shattered. Mu Yanli was dazed for a moment before crying out in fear, wanting to take them and ran away with her clay doll. A white shoe with a scale emblem embroidered on it fell. Creak. Creak. It fell on top of the doll's head which instantly shattered it. The father removed his foot and the girl was greeted by a mess of dust. The dolls were clearly lined up neatly and were smiling sincerely at her before. Why? Why was this happening? Isn't that birthday present for her? Did she do something wrong? How did she make her father angry? What had brought the end of these innocent little clay figures? Daughter of Tianyin must not be sentimental. The man was extremely cold and detached in front of the crying girl, if you like something, you will lose your composure. If you like something, you will be disgraced. You are the descendant of a deity of the heavenly realm, the ruler of all righteousness. Your father's real gift to you is to teach you that you should never say the word like to anything. No privacy. Don't be sentimental. No, no, no. As the incense burner produced, a solemn eulogy arose Tianyin, mighty. 
For many long nights she clutched her head in a sort of frenzy and screamed soundlessly behind the bed curtains. There's no way out. No answer could be found. What was a father? What was a mother? She had wanted to hug her mother, Lady Lynn, but Lady Lynn was a madwoman and she had stabbed her with scissors, so that her hands were full of holes and she had even stuck the scissors in her throat. Not private. No privacy. In the dead of night, she knelt in front of the statue and recited a spell that could not be used to defy the gods. However, she cursed in her heart that she could not shatter the statue into powder. Just like that, she transformed from a little girl into a young girl and from a young girl into a young woman. Behind her, over a thousand people kneeled as they recited the familiar chant that was carved into her heart and bone. The Tianyin is vast and mighty, none can hide from it. Sometimes, she would act like a crazed demon, her back trembling as she stood up and pretend that with a wave of her sword, she would chop everyone from the Tianyin pavilion into mincemeat before dying. However, at this time, a gentle and beautiful voice sounded next to her ear. It was very sweet and very young. The voice sang softly to her, reeds are tall, reeds are long, and they look at each other across the mountains and across the water. One side of the reeds is home and the other side of the reeds is the ocean. She opened his eyes. The sunlight shone down from behind the statue, shining mottled light on the ground. At that time, she was already the heir of the pavilion master of the Tianyin pavilion. She stared at the mottled shadows on the ground, as if she could see the reed wormwood in the midst of the song, its flowers fluttering in the wind. A woman stood in the middle of the reeds and held out her hand with a slight smile. This side of the reeds is our homeland. On the other side of the reeds is a vast ocean. Mama. She murmured. She addressed Madame Lin as mother and paid her respects accordingly. But there's only one person she would call Mama. She was her stepmother and also the Mama who had brought her up. Perhaps other people wouldn't understand why she didn't hate this woman for replacing her mother. But those people would never understand. In her life of black and white grid, there had only been those few short years when Lady Hwagui was there. She had laughed, she had been gentle, she had been warm, she had been sweet. No one would believe her. The reed song that Hwagui I had sang to coax her to sleep was the only song she had ever heard in her life besides the mighty heavenly music. Only this one song suppressed the demons in her heart throughout her entire life and also became the demons in her heart throughout her life. Yanliji. She seemed to have heard her brother Huabinan screaming. She had never heard him lose his composure like this before. However, she couldn't care less. She used the last of her spiritual energy to reduce the momentum of her landing. However, this was not for the sake of survival. Gritting her teeth, she traversed the path of martyrdom, moving one step at a time until she reached the very edge like a maggot. And then... Before anyone could react, she used what little strength she had left to suddenly throw herself at the edge of the bridge. I, Mu Yanli has voluntarily sacrificed her life for the path. I hope that you can fulfill your long-cherished wish and return to your homeland. When Shi Mei saw this, he was on the verge of going crazy. He rushed over, but it was already too late. This woman had always been cold and indifferent, she didn't have much facial expressions. Even her skin emitted a frosty, cold air. However, at this moment, she was smiling sweetly at her younger brother, who wasn't from the same mother and was reprimanded by both races. She fell on her back, her face curved into a scowl. Jija. Mu Yanli smiled and looked up at the sky. This woman, who had not moved at all, faced the vast sky where she had kowtowed countless times and said, Don't be sentimental, don't let anything hold you back. Another red light appeared on the bridge and the scarlet flames of the path of martyrdom engulfed her entire body. Before she was engulfed by the flames, she looked in the direction of the gate to the demon realm with all her might. She seemed to hear a voice coming from behind a huge door. It was gentle, it was Mama waving a small fan for her by the cool summer bed. She was singing lazily. 
The reeds are tall and long, looking at each other across the mountain. On this side of the reeds is home. On the other side of the reeds was a vast ocean. Pavilion Master Mew. Miss Mew. All of a sudden, the Zhenlong chess pieces on the path of martyrdom all went out of control. One by one, they rushed over and knelt down in front of the woman who had used her divine blood to pave the path for the demons. However, that woman had already turned into the thirtieth step of the path of martyrdom. Chu Wanning landed back on the ground, his fingertips were icy cold, and a human figure was swaying in front of him. He had originally thought that these people were chess pieces brought by Mu Yanli, but now he realized that they weren't. Most of these people wore the robes of the disciples from the Tianyan Pavilion. Their faces were very pretty and the tears they shed were all golden. They were of the butterfly boned beauty feast clan. Under Mu Yanli's sect leadership, the Tianyan Pavilion gathered so many of the surviving butterfly boned beauty feast clan in the guise of taking in disciples. At this moment, these people were crying and bawling as they staggered and kneeled on the ground. She had just brought them out of the group of cultivators and prepared to pave the path of martyrdom so that they could return home any time they the door open. Murderer! Suddenly, someone turned around and shouted at Chu Wanning, You're a murderer. His face was twisted by hatred. Why do you have to be our enemy? Why did you force Pavilion Master Mu onto this path? They were all beauties and their gazes were filled with deep hatred. Many of the butterfly-boned beauty feast rushed towards him, as if they had lost all sense of reason or knew what was important, and pounced on him like moths to a flame. Chu Wanning stood still. His eyes were dim. It would be too easy for him to block these low-level butterfly-boned beauty feasts. He didn't even need to lift his hand, just the force from his fingertips was enough to keep them from going through. Murderer. Sinner. Grandmaster. Savior of the world. Chu Wanning closed his eyes. What was he doing? What else could he do? Mo Ran was dead. The gate of time and space, life, and death is falling apart. The heavenly retribution was approaching. Mu Yanli had sacrificed her divine body to the demonic path and Shui Meng would shatter his spiritual core to suppress Taxian Jun. He suddenly felt as if he was standing before a wall made from sharp knives. The hilt was facing the cold light and he had to pass through it. Just as not everyone in the world is evil, not all of the butterfly-boned beauty feast are guilty. But he wanted to block their way home. Even if there were only 29 steps left, 29 corpses. He could not let them go and let the gate to the demon realm be opened. As soon as the gate to the demon realm opened, the heavenly retribution would descend and the two worlds would be destroyed. The people of the nine regions would not even have the chance to catch their breath and resist. What kind of ruthlessness did he have to be able to sit back and watch this happen? He couldn't. He could no longer hesitate. At this moment, Shui Meng was still using his life to buy time for him, not to mention the people who had once died in vain for this bloody road in front of him. Murderer. You killed us. You caused our deaths. Heartless. Cold-blooded. You will have your retribution. His soul was like fire but his heart was as hard as iron. Chu Wanning suddenly opened his eyes he had to become the murderer. He had no choice. Shi Ming Jing. Shi Mei looked at him through the crowd of people. That beautiful face that could topple cities still had traces of tears on it. His eyes seemed to be filled with madness, yet also with emptiness. The wind was blowing and his clothes were fluttering in the wind. He seemed to have resigned himself to the fact that Chu Wanning would come kill him. Chu Wanning's palm also started to glow with a golden light and Huisha appeared once again. With a bang, he sent his sword aura flying in front of the butterfly-boned beauty feasts who were attempting to block him. With a tap of his feet, his gaze became as sharp as a night blade as his sword pierced towards Shimei. It was at this moment that the path of martyrdom beneath their feet began to shake violently. A red pillar of light shot out from the ground, and several of the pillars of light suddenly blocked Chu Wanning's path. Someone shouted, Look! Look ahead! 
It's the demon gate. What's going on? The bridge is growing. The bridge is going to be built. In the end, it was almost a scream, the door's about to open. Shi Mei was shocked. He turned his head to look and saw a white golden radiance scattering from the location of Mu Yanli's death. It extended from the last step and headed towards the gate to the demon realm with astonishing momentum. Chu Wanning's expression suddenly changed, and after the initial shock, Shi Mei's face became filled with ecstasy. The path of martyrdom was about to be traversed the bridge to the world of humans and demons will finally be ready to be crossed. A tired and old voice came from behind the gate to the demon realm and echoed between heaven and earth. That voice seemed to have praise in it as he lazily said, there is a sacrifice from the god race on the path of martyrdom. The sound was too loud and everyone within a hundred miles of the summit of the mountain could clearly hear it. All the people who were battling raised their heads and looked towards the back of the mountain. Zhang Shi's face turned pale white. Of course, it wasn't just him. Everyone knew that the door to the demon realm was about to open. Sure enough, the old voice continued. Heaven's retribution is coming soon. When His Majesty the Demon Lord saw that you had done a great service in killing one of the descendants of the gods, he was merciful and granted amnesty. He leniently spared the last 29 steps of the bridge. The gate to the demon realm would immediately open and you are now allowed to return home. What? The mountain path on the mountain peak instantly turned into a mess. Villa Master Ma of the Dobeo Villa even sat down on the ground and started crying, Heavens, what should we do? There were even some whose faces were ashen as they fought with each other, Is heaven retribution coming soon? What's the punishment? What's the heaven retribution? Shui Meng and the Mei brothers who were fighting with Taxi and Jun were also shocked. Shui Meng's mind shook as Taxi and Jun took the opportunity to break out of the formation and fly up into the air. Shui Meng received a backlash from the force and felt a stifling sensation in his chest as he suddenly spat out a large mouthful of blood. When Taxi and Jun heard the commotion, he glanced sideways with his scarlet eyes and stared at Shui Meng for a moment. His expression was very chaotic, as if the memories in his mind were messing up again and the soul in his body was also starting to torture and kill each other. Shui Meng Mei Hanks Yu immediately brandished his sword like a gust of wind, protecting his brother and Shui Meng behind him as he warned in a low voice, Be careful. However, Taxi and Jun didn't have any intention of continuing to attack. Instead, he suddenly frowned and his heart surged with pain. No, what was going on, what's going on? He was at a loss, but he was also extremely angry. He let out a roar, lost control, and quickly charged into the dense forest behind the mountain. Only then did Mei Hanks Yu heave a sigh of relief. Turning around, he returned to the other two and asked Shui Meng, How are you? Don't worry about me, go to Shi Zun's side. Tell him all the preparations we made. Mei Hanks Yu put his hand on his wrist and shook his head, your spiritual core is on the verge of breaking. You need to heal first. Shui Meng said angrily, quickly go. How about I go over first and both of you stay here? Mei Hanks Yu knew that the situation was urgent, so he pointed at Shui Meng and said to his brother, brother, help him recuperate. I'll go find Grand Master Chu. In front of the path of martyrdom, as the final step was being completed, the path between the demonic world and the human world was finally finished. A dreamy look appeared on the faces of the butterfly-boned beauty feast. Almost all of them were trembling, and no one dared to take a step forward. Even Shi Mei didn't move an inch. After a while, it was unknown how much time had passed. Perhaps it was just an instant or perhaps it was so long that it was suffocating. The door to the demon realm suddenly rumbled and shook. In an instant, clouds flew everywhere, the winds blew in all directions, and the structure of the world seemed to be gasping for breath as they produced muffled booms. The extravagant carvings of devils parted to the left and right, and a crimson radiance shot out from the gaps. Chu Wanning only felt a terrifying evil aura gushing out from the gap. 
it was the chi of the demon realm that boosted the strength of the three forbidden techniques. The door to the demon realm had opened. End chapter.